a tiny computer with a huge potential. Let's crack this thing open and upgrade it. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today we're going to be taking a look at this Lenovo M93, and we're going to show you how to open it up and upgrade uh, everything that you want to in these things. Now, recently I did a video that I will link right up here somewhere that shows you the, the different models of these, at least the 4th gen models, the different i5s and i7s. So if you want to learn about what the best one to buy is, or at least what to look out for and what the specs are and, and how they perform, then go ahead and check that video out first. Go, uh, go buy you one off of eBay or something, pick one up cheap, and then when you're ready to upgrade it, come back to this video and we'll take you step by step into getting this thing up to much better performance. So like I said, you can pick these things off of eBay pretty cheap. Sometimes you can get them locally if there's a, a dealer local, but a lot of times they just come off a lease which means that these computers were leased to a company. They use them for several years. They get new ones and they uh, all end up at some depot or something. And these guys just sell them off cheap. So on eBay, you can get one of these anywhere from, you know, 60 to $150, somewhere in, in that ballpark, depending on what's inside it and what it comes with. You know, does it come with a power supply or not? Does it come with RAM or not? And uh, in that other video, I'll tell you what to look for. But... Really, my, my suggestion is get the computer and a power supply with it. Because um, the power supply you can probably pick up individually for like 15 bucks. But if you can get one with it, then go ahead and do that. And don't worry about the RAM or the hard drive inside there. Because we're going to upgrade those. So find the one that you like with the processor that you like. And then the rest of it we can fix. So like I said, this is the M93 model. So if we look underneath... We see Think Center M93. Now I've seen M93, M93P, which is just a, a slight modification. It's essentially the same exact thing for you and me. It, it's just a difference for uh, people that use them in the business side of things. Um, and I've also seen, I've got an M73, which is virtually the same inside. So the upgrade uh, steps that we're going to do will be the same for that M73 also. Now they make these in what they call, I think they call this the tiny format, and they make these same things with like a CD drive above it, so it's a little bit fatter, and then they make these things in full like small form factor towers that are considerably larger than this. Uh, we're just going to be focusing on this guy here because we don't need a CD, um, we don't need a big bulky machine. I'm assuming you're, you're buying this for some kind of fun project like making a maybe a retro emulator out of it, or putting in an arcade machine and uh, we're gonna get it ready for that what I find funny is most of the ones I have still have this plastic protection from the factory over the top of the power button I don't know why uh, you know the system administrators that deploy these things out in the businesses are too lazy to peel that off but it's uh, it's just kind of funny so without further ado let's crack this thing open and look to see what we can upgrade in it so the first step of course is gonna be taking off this cover and that's going to be super easy. So we're just going to look around the back side here. And there's one screw right here in the middle. I'm going to use my trusty Strabito um, driver here. I'm using a uh, Phillips 1. You could probably use a 1 or a 2 on this. Um, it's going to be pretty easy. So we're just going to take that one screw off. And don't lose it. And now once that's off then this is just going to slide a tiny bit and then it's going to pivot off. So if we just take this top cover here and I've got this sitting down, it's got little rubber feet underneath it. So I usually just sit it down the, on the table and I'm going to push towards the front. So just grab the very top of it, kind of push it towards the front. That's as far as it needs to go. And then from here, we're going to grab the front and we're going to pivot it up and then it comes right off. So when we put it back on, it's going to be exactly the same and opposite, so it's got these little catches here that are going to fit into this little groove. So we'll worry about that once we're done. But this is likely what yours is going to look like, unless you bought one that includes a drive. This drive tray is empty. Now hopefully you get one that's complete, that has the drive tray in here. Uh, it would be pretty cruddy of them if they didn't send the drive tray. Um, but you can pick those up, because I'm sure people on eBay 
uh, part these things out also. I've seen, you know, every little tiny part of these things uh, parted out. So if they can sell one of these for 80 bucks, maybe they can take it apart and sell the individual parts for, you know, 100 bucks total. So here it is. Now looking inside, we've got the processor is going to be over here underneath this fan, underneath this heat pipe. We've got the what will be our drive, our storage drive here. Underneath that is the RAM. And then we've got some I.O. of course back here. We've got some I.O. in the front here. But really all we're going to worry about is this area right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to max out the RAM on this thing. So once we uh, take this drive tray out, we're going to see where the RAM slots are and what it comes with. Um, like I said, buy the absolute minimum you can if it's a 4 gig version or something like that. Don't pay extra for the extra RAM because it's probably more expensive than if you just buy the RAM yourself. And I'll have some links down below in the description of uh, RAM that you can get on, on Amazon for pretty cheap. We're going to be using a 16 gig kit and it was pretty darn cheap. So it was definitely cheaper than buying this thing fully populated. So let's look at the drive tray. It's got two screws that hold it in place. But of all the ones I bought, I think I've only seen one that had both screws in it. So if we look right here and right here, those are the two screw holes. Now there's no screw here, so we're just going to take this one out. And on a lot of them, they're the same kind of screw and thread as the, uh, the one that's on the back. It may even be the same exact screw, depending on if they lost it or not. So once you do that, then uh, this tray is ready to come out and it's just going to slide. You can see that these two little catches here have it keyhole in place and then the screws just stop it from sliding back. So if we take this and just slide it this way a little bit, then it's going to get the tray past those keyhole pegs and then you're just going to take the whole thing up. Now, please note that you've got this Wi-Fi antenna here. This is the front Wi-Fi antenna and we've got one in the back here that goes to your actual if you screw one on and you got the Wi-Fi card right here with the two antennas attached to it. Please note that you can move this around without disconnecting that. Just don't pull it up and rip it out right away. So I'm just going to kind of leave it to the side here just so we can look at the RAM. And here's the two RAM slots. We've got in this case one uh, one dim right here on top and then there's nothing in, on the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and take this one out and we'll get it ready to pop the new ones in so to take this out just like any other kind of laptop uh, we're going to take these two little catches here and we're going to pull them away from each other and that's going to allow this to pop up it's kind of spring loaded up and then we're just going to slightly wiggle that out of its socket and this one was a Samsung looks like four gigabytes so we're going to get rid of that and we're going to pop two eights down in here so now we're ready to put the new ram in and like i said i'll have links to uh, compatible memory down in the des description but this is uh, ddr3 uh, this is a two by eight gig kit and it's pc3 uh, 12800 and this is a a lower uh, voltage 1.35 volts so we'll find the, the right kind for that. So all we're going to do is we're going to match this offset notch to where the offset notch is here. You can see it on this socket down here. And we're going to do the bottom one first. So we're going to go in at a slight angle. And you want to get it underneath these top catches. And then just kind of slide it right in to the socket. And then before I push it down, I'm going to pull it towards me to make sure it's fully seated. So I'm pulling it this way, both on both sides evenly. And then as I'm pulling that down to make sure it's fully seated, I'm just going to lay it down. And then it clicks right in past these, these clicks here. So if we look at this a little bit closer, you want to make sure that all these gold contacts here are a uniform distance in here which means that we put this thing in nice and level and it's not cockeyed you know leaning to the right or leaning to the left now by by holding on to it with both fingers and pulling it towards me as I pushed it down it kind of secures that 
Now, depending on your ram, some ram is a tiny bit thicker than other ram, and it may need a little bit more pulling um, to, to get in there. If this thing's been upgraded and downgraded several times, or ram has come in, in and out several times, then the pins inside here may be a little bit more forgiving, and it'll just pop right in. So the second one, same thing. Line up the notch the same direction as the first one. This time we're just going to go right over the top of those pins, those catches. Same thing. Go in at an angle, kind of pull it towards me, and then lay it down, click it in. And that's it. Now the RAM is done. Alright, next up we're going to go ahead and put the new hard drive in. So I've got here just a 2.5 inch SSD and you can really do any size that you want with these. I've just got a 256 gig for today, but you can go all the way up to, you know, two terabytes or whatever. They're so cheap these days. If you're going to be loading this thing up with a bunch of uh, retro games, then go ahead and grab like a one terabyte or two terabyte, and then you'll have plenty of room. Um, like I said, they're so cheap. I'll put some links down below for ones that I recommend. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount. We've got four mounting holes here. We're just going to use two of them. And you're likely not going to have screws in here. There may um, be some screws in, in yours when you open it because they can kind of push them in here and they'll be captive in there. But sometimes they'll rattle around. So before you go ahead and put this thing all the way back together, it's a good idea just to rock it back and forth to make sure there wasn't screws in there and they, during shipping, got <laughs> fell out. So we're just going to place uh, this guy in here. Now make sure it's facing the right way. We're going to have this antenna facing forward, of course, and we want the SATA connector facing the back here. So we're going to lay it in this way, and I'm just going to put two screws in the bottom here. And I've got some screws from, uh, you know, I build a lot of computers, so I got a ton of these, but these are M3 um, screws, and an M3 by 5 will probably work with these. Uh, these right here so let's go ahead and send one of these in and see and you can get these things if you don't have um, some spare screws from a PC build you can grab these things on Amazon for like six bucks for a bag of a hundred of them um, you probably don't need a hundred of them but uh, you just can't beat that price so I'm just gonna put two in just to hold the thing in place and again, remember, don't pull this thing too far away with that antenna on there. And now we're just going to lay this thing back in like we did before. I'm going to go ahead and plug the SATA connector in before I lay it down. You just squeeze that in there. And then you just want to line up these two. There's the hole here and then the hole here. And you can see how it's keyholed. So line that up with the two posts that were in there. And the posts, they do have, like it's a shaft with a little groove in it. So once you push it down in there, you want to make sure that you have the um, the keyhole right in the groove so that it will actually, you know, allow you to slide it back that way. So depending on uh, how stubborn it is, you may have to kind of push it back and forth a little bit, but just get it locked in there and then once you slide it this way to where it won't pop out you should see that your two screw holes here line up now so since we only had one screw holding this thing in before I'm just gonna take the same screw and put it back down in there you're fine with just putting one in there it'll keep it from moving um, just as long as you don't close it back up with zero screws in there if you got extras that you can put both in if not that one is gonna keep it from moving forward so now this thing is, is done. I've got the hard drive in, I got the RAM in. We're ready to take the cover. And just like I said, it's gonna be the opposite of how you got it in there, you got, took it off. So we're gonna take the, the back part of it here that had that hook that I showed you, and we're gonna lay that down here first. You wanna make sure that you get it evenly um, right to left, or in this case, front to back for me. And if you get it around both of these little brackets here, then it will lay down. And then all we got to do now is just push it back towards the back. And then once you get it all the way back to the back, you'll see your screw hole is now 
ready for the locking screw. So we'll load that up in the screwdriver. And secure that so that this top cover here can't slide anymore. And that's it. So now that all the, uh, the easy work is done, I'm going to go grab a monitor and keyboard and uh, we'll boot this thing up and make sure that the changes that we made are all uh, showing up in Windows. Alright, so I've got a little monitor out here. i got a, a wireless mouse and keyboard hooked up in here. And uh, we're just going to get into Windows. I'm not worried about hooking up to the internet just right now. Got the power supply plugged in. Like I said, hopefully you got a uh, power supply with yours. If not, there's plenty out on eBay and Amazon. And one thing to note is these things come with display ports uh, outputs. And some have VGA, but, but display ports is probably what you want to use. So if you don't have a display port cable to go to a display port monitor, then you'll want to get something like this, which is just a display port to HDMI adapter. And then you can just use your regular HDMI cable going to your uh, monitor or your TV if you're going to hook this up to a TV. So now that we get that set up, let's go ahead and power this thing on and uh, see what Windows says. And they're pretty quiet uh, to start with. Once you start really taxing them, you'll hear the fan spin up a lot. But they're pretty quiet. When you first push this power button, you may not even hear it uh, you know, spin up. But just look for the light on the front. And just like that, it's already booted up. Now, obviously, I already had installed Windows on this SSD. If you don't uh, have that, obviously, if you get a brand new drive in there, then you'll have to make yourself a handy dandy thumb drive with windows on it and uh, get that installed that way so let's go ahead and check this out to make sure that everything looks good on it and this happens to be the i7 4765 here's our 16 gigs of memory at dual channel so both chips are in there and here's our SSD. So everything uh, in our quick little upgrade was fine. If I wasn't talking you through it, and once you do it once, it takes you about five minutes to crack that thing open, put some RAM in there, throw a hard drive in there, and it will take longer to load Windows when, than it will to upgrade your computer. So I think it's going to do it for this video. Like I said, watch that other video if you want to know what all the difference is between all these different CPUs are. We go through four different CPUs and show you the specs and the and the speed test on them. And uh, also keep an eye out for a video that I'm going to do where I load this thing up with a bunch of retro games and see how it performs. We know it's going to do fine with all the old games like Nintendo, Sega Genesis, that kind of stuff. But we're going to test out to see if this thing can handle some of the newer stuff like GameCube, Dreamcast maybe. So keep an eye out on the channel for that. Hit that subscribe button if you want to make sure that you don't miss that. But that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you have success with your upgrades. Find a good deal on this. Grab some RAM. Grab a hard drive. Make it an awesome little machine. And uh, if it works out for you, give me one of those. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.